What's up guys, welcome to A1 in a Box. On the screen I have the specs for both MacBook Pros and I upgraded from a Radeon 455 to a Radeon 460 because if I'm gonna spend this much money, I might as well just pay the extra $100 and get the best graphics card there is. So I'm not like a professional video editor or anything, I'm just a general user using a MacBook Pro and so I'm just gonna share my experience with the battery life and the touch bar and everything in between for the past couple of weeks. Of course, let's start off with the hardware. You've probably already seen pictures, videos, or in store what it looks like and what ports are on there. So now the question is, is there really a difference in the size and weight? Now in the weight department, I can't really tell a difference. When I held them both in my hand, it's not like the new MacBook Pro is like a feather compared to last year's model. They honestly felt the same. Now when it comes to the size, it is a different story. You can definitely tell that it's thinner and more compact. And it's really nice sliding in and out of backpacks. The thinness of the new MacBook Pro has grown on me and even though it's a slight difference between last year's model, I mean it is thinner and who doesn't want a thinner laptop. So now let's talk about the ports and the adapters you need. So people have been blowing this way out of proportion. You don't need like 10 adapters and like a thousand cables. Like honestly, I only need this USB-C hub and a dongle. And it's sufficient enough for me to use my wireless mouse, an external hard drive, charge my MacBook Pro, and have extra ports left over for anything else. So it's not that bad and with these two things, it will be more than enough for most people. And if you don't need an SD card slot, then you just have to get dongles which are like $9. And if you're worried about losing them, just get like 4 or 5 of them and then just keep them attached to whatever device you have. Such as, if you're using a mouse, just keep it on the mouse and it just acts as an extender. So now, for those of you that really don't want adapters, there are some alternatives. You could just get new cables such as a USB-C to a micro USB or a USB-C to a normal USB-A or a USB-C to a lightning connector or a USB-C to a USB-C and if you don't want to buy cables then there are these little adapters that you attach to a micro USB and it turns it into a USB-C cable so there are alternatives if you really dislike adapters I'll put some links down below in the description box. So now moving on to the displays. Even though the resolution is the same and I was a big skeptic because it's the same resolution, but the extra brightness and the wider color gamut does make a difference. The camera doesn't do it justice but the new MacBook Pro does look a lot better. So on to the keyboard, I did a simple words per minute test. So I'm not going to make you guys watch me type for a whole minute, so I shortened the clip and I'm going to let you guys hear how loud each keyboard is. So I was faster on the 2015 MacBook Pro compared to the 2016 MacBook Pro. It makes sense since I've had the older one longer, but I actually still prefer the older keyboard than the new keyboard. Now it's the main attraction of the new MacBook Pro, which is the touch bar. So I have been using the touch bar for a couple weeks now and it's been a disappointment. I just use it for brightness control and volume control and that's it. The touch bar doesn't make me any more efficient in my daily use than without the touch bar. So I like to maximize my efficiency with the most minimal amount of effort. And the touch bar does not do that for me. For example, I like using my MacBook in bed on my stomach or on my chest. So if I'm watching a video, I have to lift my head up and make sure I'm clicking the volume button. On the older Mac, I memorized where the volume controls are and it's so much easier. Yeah, it's a little thing and you can call me lazy, but it's those little things that can make your life easier. Now, if the touch bar was above the trackpad, then we might be talking a different story. But as of right now, I'm not that impressed and really disappointed. Even though I said it was disappointing, 
It is pretty nice in Final Cut Pro and it's nice having those shortcuts down in the touch bar and it's made me actually a little bit more efficient. My favorite feature of the touch bar is the ability to skip ads in YouTube. You can just scroll to the end as you can see and you can skip ads. Definitely a welcome feature, but I'm guessing YouTube will patch it soon. Now onto some performance tests. I ran Geekbench on both models and as you can see, the multi-core score is higher on the 2015 model. This doesn't really make sense, but another YouTuber named Max Yurov says that the newer model doesn't turbocharge as high as last year's model, which then the scores make sense. Max also does a comparison between last year's model and this year's model and he does it in the perspective of a Final Cut Pro user and a Premiere user. I'll put a link to his video in the description box below and make sure to check out his video because he also does a great job comparing these two models and gives you guys real numbers. So speaking of numbers, I got these numbers from him as well and the more things you run and the longer you run them, the newer MacBook Pro is more efficient than last year's model. On last year's model, the fan speed gets to 100% quicker, it gets hotter quicker, and the gigahertz goes down as time goes on. So I can confirm these results with my own experience. For those that don't believe in these numbers and seeing is believing, I will show some footage of the fan speeds on both models coming up in the battery test. But in the performance department, the 2016 model runs everything a lot more efficiently and a lot more cooler. But for the average user who doesn't really use Final Cut Pro, you're really not going to see that much of a difference. Because when I use both of them, I certainly couldn't tell the difference and the average user probably wouldn't. Now finally on to the battery test. People have been reporting that the new model's battery life sucks. So I put that to the test and started off by playing a movie on Netflix for an hour. So I time lapsed the video and I was surprised by the results. The newer model actually had more percent left than the older model. So after this, I played a game of League of Legends on both models. Of course, they don't have the charger on them and I just wanted to see how much battery percentage I would have left. So what I did was I started recording six and a half minutes into the game on both models. As mentioned before, I'll show you guys how loud the fans get on both the 2015 model and the 2016 model. The fans do run on both models and first I'll show this year's model and then I'll show last year's model. So as you just heard, the fans on the 2015 model is much louder and the MacBook got a lot hotter than the 2016 model. So from my experience, those numbers are very accurate and they don't lie. Now the results have been contradicting what people have been reporting. You could say the newer MacBook used more batteries since it started off with a higher percentage, but still, it was crazy how they ended up at 31%. So my conclusion is the battery life is similar to last year's model and I honestly don't see that much of a difference when I use it from day to day use. So after these results and using the new MacBook Pro personally, I'm not blown away by the new MacBook Pro. Since people have been waiting for a refresh in the MacBook Pro, I think this new MacBook Pro is a little bit too hyped up. Yeah, the touch bar is nice and the laptop is slimmer, but for that price, you're not getting anything revolutionary and the only major change is a strip of touchscreen on your keyboard. Now, if you have extra money to spend and money isn't an issue, then go ahead and buy the new MacBook Pro because nothing's stopping you. But for those of you who don't have money laying around and are hesitant in buying a new MacBook Pro, then I would recommend last year's model just because about $3,000 is pretty steep for this year's model. Also, you're not getting a huge performance boost. Yes, on the older model, the fans do kick in earlier and it does get a little bit warmer, but all my programs run just fine on last year's model as they would on this year's model. I know that most everyone who's reviewing the new MacBook Pro is keeping it, but I'm gonna return this year's model and save myself about $3,400. Until all my stuff starts using USB-C and I'm forced to be using USB-C, or if next year's model is that much better than the 2015 model, then I'll be using my 2015 MacBook Pro. Also, the glowing Apple logo on last year's model is a lot cooler than this year's model. Thanks for watching guys. This video was kind of long, but if you guys enjoyed it, please hit that like button, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at A1 in a box. Till next time, 
Peace.